Hi guys, welcome back to the Blading Physio YouTube channel. Today is going to be a very different video. It's, uh, it's a new concept, it's a new thing I'm going to launch. Um, it's called Health Talk or it's just the idea of me uh, talking with some pro skaters or people in the skating industry and asking about like the more health related uh, topics and the lifestyle they have so I, th I think it's going to be important for people to know uh, what pro skaters do to keep their lifestyle going and how they keep their bodies in shape to keep skating longer so today uh, I have a very special guest because it's also the guy who kind of gave me the idea to do this series uh, it's Stefan Brando and I'm gonna talk with him about a lot of stuff i hope you guys enjoy um don't forget to subscribe like this video and leave a comment if you want and yeah enjoy guys hi man hey what's up brother i'm good how, how are you doing good got a lot going on i don't know if you can see my floor but the floor of my office is just covered in skates right now really <laughs> yeah just like okay. i don't know if you can tell or not just like parts everywhere right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like trying to clean and organize and get everything around but but you're skating the solos right now yes um so justin thursday has my new pair yeah I saw it on Instagram today, like. dude he he sent me those he's like are these are, are these okay i was like yeah of course they're okay these are amazing i was like this is above and beyond what i like wanted you to do I was like this yeah. is great i just wanted something to bolt on there so i didn't have to play around mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm super stoked so I've yeah. been doing, I've been like shaving the bottoms mm -hmm. flat and oh. then like putting, so I put this like foam on the bottom. So that mm -hmm. way, like when you do like a, like a carbon or an adapt sole plate to just bolt on, that way it's got a little bit of something to not rattle around. Okay. So I've been doing that. And I was like, I'm tired of shaving the bottoms of these flat because they never end up being super supported. So like, I really just want something to be able to bolt in. Mm -hmm. so he was just like yeah he's like cool i could probably do something like that eventually and i was like cool i'll send you my salmons that i just got so that way whenever you're ready and a couple days later he's like is this okay and i was like <laughs> already like th like this is perfect so genius yeah i'm super stoked it's it's 3 3d printed right so he just yeah. put, like, kind of soul thing like i think the material is called pla mm -hmm. um from what i've gotten from him it's faster than UHMW, but it might be a little less, not, not as hard and a little softer. So it may wear down slightly quicker, but then again, UHMW, I feel like never wears down ever. Mm -hmm. So I think he kind of wanted me to like torture test the material for mm -hmm. everything going forward. Yeah. So could be, could be kind of game changer, right? I think 3d printing is going to be the future for skating stuff. I, I think less people are going to have to rely on well, I love this skate, but the soles are, are terrible. It's like, well, I can keep the boot and I can 3D print my own stuff or yeah. it's going to open up the door for like, I think instead of there being hardware companies, it'll end up being printing companies. Hmm. That's, you know, like somebody like Justin, like Justin may not like, and I don't know what his plans are moving forward, but he might not do a, like a, a hardware and soul plate company, but he might be a service for people to be like, Hey, I want you know, this type of sole plate, but I want the back a little bit bigger or the heel yeah. a little bit wider and like almost like a customized thing. So, I mean, King Souls, when they were doing that, that worked amazing. And I think he's still backed up That's after everything that happened with him down there in Nashville. Mm -hmm. So he, I know he still had orders left over after like the tornado and everything hit down there. Oh, okay. So, um, and just knowing like what he did it's like that it, with a 3d printer like if you can figure it out like it's gonna be wild yeah well yeah i i didn't see it in like printing your own boots that would i don't know if that would work but like i don't think it's that to there yet but from what it sounds like you can do a lot of parts mm -hmm. yeah so and that's that's i mean the only issue that i've had with solomon's in the past year has been the soul plate situation mm -hmm. I don't like the stock soles shaving stuff down to like put a, a different sole plate on. It just, it works for a little bit and then it either starts to like break apart or break down or it just doesn't feel as good. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I love this boot. If I could just have something to bolt on. So it just stays there and keeps it solid. Like mm -hmm. 
So now like, I'm set. So yeah, I'm very like, excited to skate them. <laughs> that's that's crazy. That's good. Like, um, what I wanted to say was like, do you think that the um, the material of the sole plate would also be like um, better for impact absorption, maybe or? I mean, I think I'm going to be the one that finds that out. <laughs> yeah, you're going to test it out. Yeah. Like Justin's really good at, at set slides and grinds and, and crappy ledges. because we're here. He's here in Ohio, same state as me. Mm -hmm. So our winters can get pretty harsh. So a lot of our concrete is not good concrete. <laughs> We've got some pretty crappy ledges. Mm -hmm. So um, I know he's been testing them out and they seem to hold up. So for me, just jumping off of stuff, I think they'll, they'll do great yeah that's that's interesting because like in the theme of this uh interview thing i was like I, i had a question about like absorption or materials that you think that can help with like you like you know you're known for jumping off roofs yeah and all the other stuff but is there th things that you use for like the absorption because yeah one thing that i have always done is I've always had, no matter what skate I'm in, I always have an SL heel pad. Mm -hmm. So for me in general, with any type of skate, I like to be leaning forward. Um, something that I found out pretty early on was that if I'm going to fall doing a gap or a drop or anything like that, it's better to fall forward than backwards. Mm -hmm. So I like that lean, that forward lean from having like a super high heel. And then I've also realized for me personally, it helps with like power transfer. So when I'm skating and pushing, being a little farther forward makes me feel like I'm going faster. So whenever yeah. I take them out or I'm testing liners or it just doesn't feel as good. So that obviously helps a lot with shock absorption, mm -hmm. but I also normally, depending on the shell um, of what I'm skating, I'll put a um, full uh, insole underneath the liner. Right. So I'll have the SL shock absorber cut whatever size needed to fit a heel, uh, not a heel pad, um, a full insole underneath the liner. And then inside the liner, I always do a Dr. Scholl's insole. Okay. Um, so Dr. Scholl's is like an orthotic company here. Mm -hmm. So, and they just have like super thick, um, I don't know. It's just, they feel great. And then I have very high arches. So I get a Dr. Scholl's insole that has a high arch. Yeah. So That's all so those great. things combined, I figured that setup out maybe, maybe like 10 years ago that that was like the most comfortable for me. And I've just run with it with every single pair of skates yeah. since. And I just, I can't like, that's one of those things like I can't skate unless I have that like mm -hmm. insoles, like, I don't know if I have them on here. I have just like, I have like a whole stock of just like extra. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's funny that we're talking about this and I actually have all this stuff here. Like, just extra insoles just in case like yeah. I've got, <laughs> I've got it all like set and ready. Yeah, that's it's perfect. Like, yeah, yeah it's that's super helpful. Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, of, of course. Like, like you said, like the high arch you have in the foot, like to support it, because if you if you land on stuff and the, the arch just comes down, I cramp up. Yeah, my feet will cramp. That's like the big thing for me with like the, the arch. If I don't have that support, like even just standing around in skates, my feet just cramp up and it's mm -hmm. I, just because of the arch. Yeah, it, it has no support. So yeah, yeah. It, it asks a lot. Yeah, that's That's a good one. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people use already insoles or, or that much because you use a lot of, a lot of, it can change the way your skate feels a lot, mm -hmm. like good way or bad way. Um, I feel like a lot of people just kind of go with the stock liner and just, mm -hmm. if it is what it is. And if it doesn't feel good, they just kind of like toss it out if it doesn't feel good. And I've said multiple times to people, I'm like, you would be surprised how just changing the insole or like adding a little bit of shock absorption underneath the liner will change the way the whole skate feels on your foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially like with the wedge you put in and you put like, you, you put your weight more in front, even that biomechanically, it's just way different. So like you said, prefer it. more power of, of course, because biomechanically it's whole different. So and I, I think that people don't realize too, is like everyone's feet are different. So just because I've got a size nine razors, it doesn't mean the, the next guy that has the same size nine razors that we should set the same skate up the same because our feet may be different shaped or like I have higher arches. And I think people need to figure those things out because it can change the way a skate feels completely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even in daily life, uh, we now see that yeah, a lot of causes of foot pain or, or even pelvis problems is because of footwear and 
yeah, just all companies like Nike and, and Adidas and all stuff, just because they don't have enough support for the food or too much support for the food that it even yeah, and it's problems. funny that that's that's a, like another issue is too much support. Yeah. I know a lot of runners don't like to have like the crazy amount of foam that some of the like trainers have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is like now nowadays they go back to like barefoot or minimal shoe yeah. wear. Like, um, yeah, it's very interesting. So that's a, an interesting topic also for skating, I guess. Like what to do with food and stuff. I should. I should write that down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a topic that I feel like doesn't get discussed a lot. I, I know a lot of people do the the super feet insoles, and those are really helpful to a lot of people. But I feel like that's not enough of an option. You know, like I I, I would never probably use them just for me. Um, there's a skateboarding company called. Um, I wish I could remember the name, but their whole, all they do is they make insoles mm -hmm. um, just for like specifically like Jaws. So like the guy in skateboarding that only does roofs, so like he's yeah. the roof guy in skateboarding. Mm -hmm. He had his own specific insole uh, through that company, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to take absorption. And then that company ended up making a shoe. So they now sponsor like, you know, guys that used to be on DC or guys that used to be on Nike, they now ride for, I wish I could remember the name of this, this company, but they have their own shoe now. And that's these like skateboarders will ride that shoe because mm. they based everything around that insole yeah. and it feeling better. Mm -hmm. And for them to be so far advanced compared to like our industry and them just getting into like worrying about their feet and insoles yeah. is kind of crazy to me. I guess that's also why intuition is one of those more comfy liners because you can heat mold them right yeah just because it adapts to your foot is like a good thing i'm i'm one of the very very few that finds those liners very uncomfortable could be yeah yeah and it's, once again it's like it's a personal preference thing yeah, like true. i know that doesn't work for my foot and it, it feels uncomfortable so i've had to figure out my own way of doing things so yeah, yeah, yeah. sure so, all right nice um great start yeah <laughs> I, I was kind of nervous for this talk and I, I, I didn't i didn't want to like get stuck on stuff but i feel like it's gonna be fine yeah <laughs> just um just like just in this team with um all uh skate gear and stuff is is there things you adapt to your daily life um to to keep on skating or to be able to skate i heard from the platform uh podcast you did that you had a real a period of um a lot of muscling and yeah yeah um, bodybuilding yeah, yeah, um bodybuilding. i've i've been lifting lifting weights for i want to say almost six years now seven years now um always constantly do it um got to a point like i said in the uh, platform i was working for a bodybuilding company so at that time i just i got massive like i was huge um, if you're in that lifestyle, it's very easy to keep up. But for me now, you know, working the jobs that I work, doing the things that I do, it's not realistic to be as big as I was. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying, like, it, it's hard to eat six meals a day. <laughs> like, even when like, that is your, your life and your job, it's, that's a hard task. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, and this is something that I dealt with before working there, it's also not financially, uh, an option for some people like, like six meals a day is a lot. That's a lot of food to be buying, you know, weekly. So um, I obviously don't go that hard and that heavy as I used to. Um, corona definitely changed a lot of things because most gyms in the U.S. have been shut down most of the year. Mm -hmm. um, definitely changed my normal uh, schedule of going to the gym and working out. But for the most part, depending on my job schedule, I'm pretty much in the gym at least five times a week, if not more. All right. Um, so normally every single weekday I'll be in the gym and then weekends I kind of reserve just for skating. So um, obviously easily could work out, you know, in the morning before going out and skating, but skating is so important to me that I don't really want to, to mm. hinder myself or be tired or I want to be at my, my full potential yeah, yeah, sure. on, on, on a weekend when it's, you're able to film, you're able to go to spots and, and do all mm. those things. So, um, yeah, just kind of have always had a normal bodybuilding split. So I'll do 
one to two days of legs and then kind of split it up between, you know, arms, chest, shoulders, back, mm -hmm. kind of just depending on what I'm doing during the week, or if I'm not going to be skating a lot, I'll do legs twice. Um, mm -hmm. If I know that I'm going to be skating a lot, I might not do legs. Um, mm -hmm. If I know that I'm going to be doing a lot of heavy lifting in everyday life, I won't do shoulders. So kind of just like have that give and take of, you know, uh, not having a normal schedule. I kind of know what I'm about to do and what I need to do at the gym. And, but that's kind of what I've always done, um, with everything that's been happening this year with Corona and everything that I've had going on with skating, something that I want to get into more of is a lot more full body and core and, um, almost, I don't want to say cardio workout, but like almost like hit and full body stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, as much as I love the bodybuilding aspect of working out and going to the gym and just lifting heavy. Um, I also know that that, that is very healthy and that is a great thing that everybody should do. But for me going forward, as I get older, I want to be able to skate as long as possible. Yeah. So I want to have full body health as opposed to just kind of strength and conditioning yeah. health. You know? Yeah. 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 So. yeah. Especially the, the aspect of full body health is, is a really key word, I guess there. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's something that I've kind of realized, like you can be healthy, you can eat healthy. Like you can have, like, like I said, like a bodybuilding split, like I did, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're hitting all of the, the, you know, like the checklist for full body health. Yeah. So that's something that I've kind of realized over the past year that I want to do better with going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially that. And also with like core and the tinier muscles a lot of people don't realize that because but like the core of your shoulder core in in general all those things that's that's the aspect of the whole body um training i guess because yeah a lot of people who go to the gym will probably more lift like the heavier weights or the bigger muscles but that stability in the body is so important and that's a thing i want to give away with with this whole thing so that's great that you talk about it already um, and i think this is something that i find really cool about your channel and why i was excited to talk to you is that there's so many specific things that uh skaters specifically can be doing in the gym to help out not only just in their everyday lives but for skating specific mm -hmm. there's so many things that will help directly just by going for even half an hour a day that people will see a massive difference in their skating and how long their sessions can be, you know, how many more spots they can go to, like the amount of tricks and, and different types of spots that they can hit, you know, just by having better conditioning or better leg strength. Like it's just all these little things. And I, I think people see it as, oh man, I've got to be in the gym every single day for an hour a day or go twice a day and like be, you know, eating like super, super healthy. And it's just by going, keeping your same lifestyle and diet that you have already but adding going just to the gym for half an hour doing some sort of workout like i don't think people realize the immense amount of changes they will see just by doing something that small yeah yeah sure and even there's so much you can do at home already also yeah you don't need to go to the gym but obviously you have equipment there it's 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 just the whole sphere or around there that that helps you to get it definitely makes it easier for me so yes. I, i'm understanding yeah. i i had a very hard time uh, while gym shut down for Corona this year, um, I did try to do a lot of at-home workouts and it just was not the same mm -hmm. for me. And it was, it was, it's been tough. It's, it's definitely not been easy. And I think we're about to go. We found out a couple of days ago that where we live, Ohio, the governor is thinking about shutting down bars, restaurants, and gyms again. again no. So again, yeah. So it might be another period of, you know, things being shut down where before it was, Corona hit in the spring. So yeah. people were like able to start going outside. Like I did a lot of, um, big wheel blading, which is something I never really did before because mm -hmm. I was just normally skating. So I turned, you know, big wheel blading into my fitness routine. So that was my cardio. That was how yeah. I stayed healthy. That was how I lost my Corona weight that I gained mm -hmm. because we weren't eating the healthiest either. So that was like how I got back into things. And now that it's, you know, it's, much much colder here it's starting to rain it's going to start snowing people aren't going to want to go outside and work mm -hmm. out and if they don't want to work out at home it's it's going to be tough so mm -hmm. it's that's one of those things that we've kind of had to like figure out what to do and yeah i yeah. I, I don't like working out at home <laughs> yeah I, th i think that's more of a mental process do not to like like working working out at home it's just 
you live there, you eat there, you, you do all the other stuff. So like also working out, like working out is a kind of suffering kind of like, yeah, especially you're suffering in, in your when, comfort when, zone. Yeah. So I guess that's, that's like a barrier to, to work out at home. Um, but big wheeling is, is a, is a good solution, but yeah, if it's good. I was very surprised by how, uh, not conditioned to it. I was, um, cause the way I was doing it, I was almost doing full sprints. So I wasn't just casually going on like a bike path or anything like everything I do, I've kind of got to go all at it or nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, we've got a park that's next to our house. So I would start out like going up the park and then the park leads into the city. So I would skate as fast as I could until a stoplight. And then if the stoplight was green, I'd keep going as fast as I could. <laughs> if it was red and I had to stop, I'd stop and wait. So it was kind of like, it was almost like my hit workout, mm-hmm. you know, of like, like sprinting for a certain amount of time and then walking and then sprinting super hard. Like I kind of made it like that. Cause I don't mind hit. Like I prefer hit cardio as opposed to steady state cardio. Um, just running at a, a steady pace. I just, I can't do it. I get very bored. I, I need, yeah. I need some like interaction. So that's why I don't mind doing hit. Um, I kind of prefer that. So I kind of like laid that over into my, my big wheel blading. So I would go, you know, into the city and go a couple blocks as like full sprint on my skates and then give myself like a break for a block or two and then go with full sprint again. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of fun, but once again, it's going to be raining and snowing. So it's kind of not quite fun. sure what's going to end up happening. Yeah. So the situation is pretty bad there, I guess. Uh, so I think the situation now in the U S is more people are being tested. So they're finding more cases and they, as they said, there were going to be more spikes, you know, there's going to be ups and downs of this. And before winter, when people are starting to go inside, um, we even noticed this down the road from us, there's a brewery that just opened. So people are going inside the brewery and when you're sitting down and eating or drinking, you don't have to wear your mask Mm -hmm. and everything in there is pretty close quarters and people aren't eating or drinking outside on the patio because it's starting to get cold. So Mm -hmm. everybody's inside. And once those situations start happening in the cold and you're in a not well ventilated area and people are eating and drinking, not wearing masks, it's going to spread. Yeah. So of course there's more cases, of course, things like that are going on. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's also one of their concerns with places like the gym is if you're working out you don't have to be wearing your mask mm. so that's like one of like the, the uh, state mandated laws mm. so if you're like walking into the gym or you're you know walking from one thing to another or you know you're in the locker room you have to have it on yeah but if you're actually in the process of working out you don't have to wear one mm-hmm. so once again as people aren't going to be able to be going outside and running they're going to be going into a gym and running and if they're exercising they're not wearing a mask it's not a well ventilated area so yeah. that's that's kind of the concern with the numbers spiking so i, I don't know what's going to happen i don't know where it's going to go um my personal schedule has been so crazy with the jobs that i've been contracted for and freelance mm. that skating for the past few months with me filming what i was filming for skating kind of became almost the gym for me yeah. because i was skating so much so I was, I was skating three four five days in a row sometimes filming for these things so that kind of ended up becoming the gym for me. And then now that I've been working, I've been working 12 hour days sometimes, I'm very understanding of people that work in nine to five and don't want to go to the gym because yeah. I've been doing, you know, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Don't really want to go to the gym after that. I kind of just want to go home and, and relax. So mm-hmm. I'm understanding like it's, it's not an easy lifestyle choice when you have a busy schedule to try and have you know, a, a healthy regimen. Yeah. So it's, it's tough. Yeah, so sure. I commend anybody that can do it. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. I see the dog in the, in the background. <laughs> you see me. You got to be on every podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got, always got to make an appearance. Let, let her presence be known. <laughs> Just let me know. Yeah. Um, I want to come back to, um, was there a reason why you started working out or was it just you know what it was? I, I was always a very uh, lanky and skinny guy. And I got to a point where I was just sick of it. I just didn't want to look that way anymore. And uh, we had a, I'm not sure how we had it, um, but at my parents' house, there was a, um, one of those like home workout machines, the wider, like the cable mm-hmm. um, machines. So uh, they weren't using it. I was able to, to get it and take it to my apartment where I was living at the time. And 
just started working out that way slowly kind of like learning things and then um upon me i was in columbus for a little bit i think this was like six years ago a friend of mine here was like hey like i know you're like starting to get into working out more come to the gym and i'll teach you specific exercises and a specific way to do them so that's what kind of like set it all off for me um i got super into learning about it um i got super into learning you know why certain things work certain ways why grips, like certain grips on certain exercises work for certain people and, and, and do and don't, you know, what they're good for, what they're not good for. So I just got super deep into it as a hobby. Um, but for me, it was, I never liked the way I looked. I was always a skinny guy. So starting to like bulk up and have some muscle mass, it made me much happier with myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as I found out, like it ended up making my skating look better. So skating felt better and it looked better instead of, you know, kind of arms flailing all over and like having very long, like, you know, appendages filling out and getting bulkier. I kind of had like more of like a, like a, yeah, like a, a stance. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it, it was crazy. You know, this is one of the things I said to David in that platform podcast, he was like, you know, when you were at your biggest, like, I'm sure that was a hindrance on your skating. And when I was at my heaviest and my most muscle mass, I felt like my skating looked the best because I was like solid as a rock. I didn't move. So I would love to get back to that point. At least, like I said, that, that body type that I had then was very unrealistic unless you're into yeah, like body the, you know, the fitness life, like the, uh, the fitness scene and the uh, job and fitness or that lifestyle. Um, but I'd like to get as close to that as I could. And that was mm-hmm. something that I was trying to get back to before Corona. So it's, it's just been a weird process of like, uh, back and forth, you know, yeah. like getting on a, like a specific diet again and, and, and doing those things. So it's kind of just been figuring out, you know, yeah. what there is to do. And luckily I've had skating to be a focus mm-hmm. and have that be my outlet for, you know, my physicality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it wasn't because, uh, you had an injury in skating or nope. something like that. No, nope. okay. I was just, I just became super interested in it. I just saw, I was like, Hey, you know, if I start lifting weights, I can probably get a little bit bigger. Like I would like to be bigger. I don't like how I look. Mm-hmm. And then I just got super into it. I always compared it a lot to skating where it was like, you were pushing yourself physically, yeah, sure. you know, like, it's, and I think that having that coming from skating and then going to that and having that mindset was very helpful. Um, I can understand like my girlfriend's more into like a lot more like cardio and CrossFit style workouts Mm -hmm. and normal bodybuilding sets kind of bore her. Mm -hmm. So I'm very understanding of, of that and why, but like me coming from skating and like, I see it as I'm pushing myself Mm -hmm. physically, like going how, like how much farther can I go? Like, well, I did a 20 stair rail. Can I do a 25 stair rail? Can I 180 into the 25 stair rail? So to me, like that was, you know, going up in weight or doing different exercises. So having that mindset was very interesting mm-hmm. and have you have you seen differences or have you felt maybe differences uh because of your working out or because you sporting or knowing what you do that it uh, helps you in injury prevention or stuff like that you know it's funny this is something that i don't think a lot of people know i actually had very bad scoliosis growing up okay. so i would go to a chiropractor every two weeks to, <laughs> to straighten my spine back out Mm -hmm. Um, I remember like the first time I went, I was having very bad, uh, back spasms in gym class. I think it was middle school that this started for me. And I went, um, to our local chiropractor who is a sports, he's sports related. And funny enough, he went to school in Columbus. So now we have that connection too. (laughs) Um, but I remember that first time he was like, your spine does this. Yeah. He's like, you just have a section of your spine that's so shifted off to the side and it's making your muscles spasm because they're not in the right spot. So, um, gosh, I want to say probably almost 10 years of starting from going every two weeks to once a month to like once every two months as it got better and better and better. But I stopped going when I started lifting heavy. Mm. That was something that I noticed as the heavier I lifted and the more different types of exercises that I was doing with heavy weights, my back felt better. So I, you know, it didn't crack as much. It wasn't out of place. Like you, I, I can feel it because when your back is out of place, your knees will hurt, your ankles will hurt because your alignment is completely off. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that is extremely important for skating. So if you're, you know, babying one, one side or the other, this is something that I've noticed happening with my recent ankle injuries. If I'm babying that ankle, my other knee will hurt. 
you know, because I'm like trying to not press down on that ankle. So I'm walking awkwardly. Yeah, compensation, my, yeah. Sure. yeah the compensation, my opposite knee will start to hurt. So that was one thing that, that I am very happy um, that I was able to start doing uh, with the weightlifting was not having to worry about my back, not have to go to a chiropractor anymore. Um, like I said, it's been six years since I've started and I don't think I've gone to the chiropractor once since. So once again, that's a personal thing. I don't, if you have scoliosis, don't just start lifting weights thinking it's going to cure it. Like mm -hmm. I, I needed to go to the chiropractor and it was great that I did. Um, yeah. I had a lot of knee issues in college too. And talking with him, it was all because of the way that my skates were. So once I stopped skating, I was skating reps. Okay, yeah. So, um, and I remember going in and like showing him my skates and he was like, yeah, you can't be skating these skates. He was like, look at how they're bowing out. He's like, them bowing out is making your knees do this. That's affecting your back. It's affecting everything. He's like, you're in pain because of that. And sure enough, when I stopped skating them, I never had knee pain. Hmm. So interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very unusual. Yeah. <laughs> I love how chiropractors see other, uh, links with other parts in the body and so i'm studying that's, that's that's one thing that i was very lucky that he was able to do was to figure that out like i said he was he was based in sports chiropractic yeah so he played baseball in college so um part of me knowing him was because i used to play basketball so and he was one of our referees so he would see me be in pain in basketball games and my um, back spasming so that's i luckily like had that connection so yeah. And as I got more into skating, he was super interested and of course would always check like my joints and ankles and knee and just make sure that I was always okay. And I've, I've been very, very lucky that I haven't had more like, you know, joint injuries and things like yeah. that. And I really think it's a lot of it is one diet and two, you know, staying on some sort of fitness routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were talking uh, earlier about diet. Like, is there a kind of diet you're following now? Because um, so when I was you know, doing the bodybuilding heavily, it was a lot of pretty much just chicken, rice, and broccoli all the time. Um, and that got for me for the longest time, even since I was a, a young kid, I've never been into meat. Um, I've never liked meat. Uh, chicken was the one thing that I could do. Um, like hamburgers and pepperoni pizza specifically, um, were okay, but other types of those meats, I just, I never liked meat. So working for a bodybuilding company and eating chicken nonstop all day, every day, I got very, very sick of it. And like, still to this day, like the thought of it, like it, it grosses me out. So, um, about five, four or five years ago, I slowly started adding different types of, um, plant protein into my diet. So I ate tofu for the first time. Um, I tried Satan, um, Love Satan. I actually just bought some today because it's been a little bit since I've had it. Um, so basically vegetarian now, mm -hmm. um, have been, I want to say fully for two years, kind of started transitioning me like three years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but get main sources of protein from falafel, beans, eggs, um, do a lot of protein shakes when we are going to the gym a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, that's kind of always the thing that I hear from people is when they go vegan or vegetarian, it's always, well, where do you get your protein from? So people don't realize that there's so many different options and so yeah. many different ways. Yeah. Um, so I've had like a very kind of specific diet just because of that and because of what I like to eat mm -hmm. um, and the, the meals that I do enjoy. And they're generally fairly healthy. It's, you know, normally um, a green and a rice Uh, a brown rice and, um, you know, some sort of either a veggie or like a, like one of those, those proteins. Mm -hmm. So, um, I feel like we've done a fairly good job until, you know, Corona and this year and being on lockdown, we've, me and my girlfriend have had a, a very good, um, diet. She's always been vegetarian her whole life. Okay. So, um, when we do meal prep, when <laughs> we actually do, um, <laughs> we eat very, very healthy and do a great job. Um, but I think, that's something that a lot of people take for granted. Um, I don't think people realize how mm -hmm. much, even if you don't want to work out, how much changing your diet alone will change your body and the way it feels yeah. for skating. Yeah, it, it's 70% diet and 30% exercise. So absolutely. So, and would, would you recommend those things also for skaters? Because like we're talking a little bit about bodybuilding and stuff right now. And I don't know if skaters would be like, yeah, but he was bodybuilding. So he was adapting his diet, but 
Would yeah. you recommend it for skaters too? You know what? And I think I, this is something that I found is the hardest thing about health and fitness is you have to try a bunch of things to figure out what works for you. And it sucks because you may be trying a workout process or a diet for six months and it doesn't work. And then you've got to move on to a next one. So I completely understand that that's frustrating and you don't want to like do that multiple times. You just want to find your thing and like, you know, start to look better, feel better, whatever. Um, but for me, it was just finding the things that were healthy that I like to eat. So like, I love kale. Like I really love kale. It's great. And I know a lot of people hate it, but I love it. So I add it into a lot of the things that I eat and I'm fine with it because I enjoy it. So I have a friend here who is, who's a skater and he's a, he's, he's a big dude and he's very into powerlifting. So he pretty much consistently eats red meat and a carb and that his body is fine with that. And he's still able to skate at, he, he's amazing. I think this was his best year of skating in my opinion, okay. you know, and he just does powerlifting and he just eats red meat, but that works for his body. Like he has told me that like the way his, you know, his makeup is a lot of greens and even spinach, it doesn't sit in his body. Well, it just goes right through him. So for him, his diet works for him and he was able to figure it out. So you might tell somebody like, you know, this, this dude, that's, he's a big dude and he power lifts and eats red meat. Like you wouldn't normally consider that like, oh, that makes him healthy for skating, but mm -hmm. that works for his body. Yeah. So, and what, what I do, I found that works for my body. And this is one thing that I can give as a piece of advice to people is you're going to have to try things out. Like you're going to have to try something for a couple months to see if it works or changes for you before you move on to the next thing and try that. Like that's frustrating. I know, but that's, that's the only way, like you really have to figure out what works for you specifically. Would you, would you believe that it Im impacts the, the results in skating too? Like just people who focus on I the think, I think so. don't? Um, I think it, obviously definitely can, you know, if you're drinking a lot of soda or, you know, you're going to a session and instead of drinking water, or taking a gallon of water, like you're chugging a, a Coke or a Pepsi, like in the long run, that's definitely going to affect you. Um, like I've even noticed this, like I'm a big, I like coffee a lot. Um, but I pretty much strictly drink black coffee. That's, that's always been that way for me. Like no sugar. I don't like a lot of milk mm -hmm. or, or any at all, but if we're out skating you know, and we're trying to film all day. It's a lot of, well, I'm running low on energy. Let's go get coffee. And for me, like that doesn't always necessarily work. Mm -hmm. What would work better for me is going and getting a meal and eating healthy. And that is going to prolong my energy and make it able for me to skate longer and, you know, get more clips, do whatever. So that's something that I've kind of realized about myself is where most people will be like, Oh, like I want to keep skating. I'm tired. I'm just going to grab a coffee. I get jittery and lightheaded if I do that. So what I have started to do is I always try to take healthy snacks with me. So if we're not at a point in the day or not around, you know, a restaurant that we can stop at or, or get good food, I always have apples. I have protein cookies. I have like some sort of like health bar with me. Mm -hmm. So that way I can keep my energy up and kind of tide that hunger over until I can get something. And that has been immensely helpful. And that's one of those things that I've realized about myself. It's like, If I take a big bottle of water and I take a couple snacks and make sure I eat before I'm able to skate way longer, way more, you know, if I'm trying a clip instead of me saying like, Oh, I can't get the clip. I've got to stop. You know, if I'm an hour and a half into getting a clip, I've still got energy to keep going. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that I see a lot of people, you know, if they're trying a trick, the same trick for an hour, they're like, Oh, I'm done. Or they could just be, Oh, I'm done for the day. Yeah. And that's something with me. It's like, if I'm two, three hours in, I'm still going. So, I mean, granted that comes from, you know, playing sports and being healthy my whole life too, obviously, but for somebody that doesn't have a healthy lifestyle, like you're saying, even just changing just your diet or just even like a half an hour of some sort of workout can change everything for you immensely. Yeah. 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 For sure. Especially like sugars are so bad, but like not a lot of people realize how bad it is just and how in much general. they're in. They're in, uh, yeah, especially, yeah. especially here in America, awesome. they're in oh, yeah. everything. So yeah, it's, but, you got to really got to pay attention. But even like in ketchups, stuff like that, there's so much sugar and just to keep eating it, just to, because it has that, this addiction factor to it. Sugar it has really addiction does. Factor. So that's just, it's just marketing. We're, we're guilty over quarantine of that. So yeah, quarantine. Yeah. I, I think the mental aspect 
plays a lot too. Like it really you don't does. Feel well, you you eat shit. It's it is, but it's it's important to break that pattern again and again and again. Just this to... is something that we realize too. The when we're having our periods of you know consistently going to the gym, you consistently eat healthy. Almost like it's an excuse to eat healthy. It's like, well, if I'm working out around lunchtime, I'm going to eat a good breakfast, go to the gym around lunchtime, come home from the gym, eat right after something good and healthy. And it just kind of rolls into everything. Whereas if you're not going, you don't really care. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I'm not going. It doesn't really matter. Or, you know, it's why do I need to, you know? So that's, that's something that I have found that is extremely helpful to me is if I'm on the schedule of going, I'm always eating good and also if you're always going it's okay to eat something bad every once in a while because yeah for sure, for sure. Out, yeah, so. you have to treat yourself too like that's exactly obvious. but it's important to like get back at it and try to keep it or and it's to me it's sometimes easy to start with little things like try to avoid the the soda stuff just start with water and just that changes so much already even if it you're really does. not eating that good just starting with only drinking water is so much and once you start seeing those like slow changes from things like that it almost gets addicting to like okay well if cutting out soda made me look this much better what else can i do yeah it's like well just working out you know a couple times a week for half an hour makes me look this good what if i work out five times a week for an hour yeah so Mm -hmm. yeah five times a week is so it's pretty it's I, I yeah i'm pretty intense with it it's, yeah, it's, it's I'm, very, I'm very all or nothing with a lot of things mm-hmm. so and that's what's just kind of always my schedule and it's what i like to do so mm-hmm. but yeah on the opposite side like if you spend one hour on 24 hours a day just on yourself on your body just to sport it's not that much it's like so yeah I wish, yeah, I wish a lot of people would realize this. Because... <laughs> Especially thinking about the long run. And, you know, I see a lot of people are like, oh, I wish I could have kept skating, but this happened to me or this happened to me or, you know, I don't have time or my health, whatever. And it's like, that, that's something for me personally that why I want to, to stay healthy and, and be on a routine is I want to be able to skate for as long as I can because it's something that I really love and that really makes me happy. So if, you know, going to the gym a little bit longer or pushing myself to do better and be healthier gives me a couple more years of skating then great i'm all for it yeah for sure for sure really i, I hope a lot of young people could hear this or, or get a notice of this because if you start young with it just realizing it it just started realizing already even if you don't apply it yet just realizing what you slowly turn into like a healthier lifestyle and that's already important if you start them young just to realize what 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 it does with their body and how they can keep on sporting longer in general just in general like um maybe a little bit change of topic is more like are there um stuff um um yeah that you how do i say this like did you build up your skate setup to be the best for you in in the way of uh, the, the skating you do like to like we talked about the impact uh, like the yeah software. absolutely is there also like your frames your reels is are there stuff you change about that too or because like 90a is pretty hard yeah um, about the balance frames um if 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 that would be more shock absorption i don't know yet but so the the me always doing like a 90a is more of it lasting a little bit longer like i said like we don't always have the best concrete and floor here or you know ledges or things like that like it's not it's not always a great material as opposed to like california where everything's smooth and brand new and they don't get any rain so the rain's not affecting their concrete we're here it's like we have rain and winters of snow so that really makes a big difference so for me the 90a is more on that side um i'm so used to it i can't say that like there may be somebody that puts a 98 wheel on and they do a gap and they're like ow that hurts like i'm very understanding of that um something that i noticed um i was skating an old set of balance frames or not balance frames um core frames so the core frames had that aluminum core Mm -hmm. so i was getting an older set of those recently and i noticed that uh even on smaller gaps i could feel how more rigid they were and i didn't have as much shock absorption Mm -hmm. so for me personally, if I was to ride that frame 
then I would change the wheel setup. Yeah. Um, but for me, the way I skate now and what's available, it, it works. Um, I, I am also understanding that skating flat is obviously a thousand times easier to, to take impacts and do gaps and do drops, but I have never been a big fan of skating flat. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a flat setup for certain roofs, like with shingles, you know, overlapping and being bumpy. Sometimes with Anna rocker, you lose speed or landing is hard Then flat just makes it easier. So I always have a flat setup with me just in case I need it. Or like I said, ground here is never the best. Mm -hmm. So if there's a trick that requires, you know, flat for better ground, I'll do that. Um, but realistically, the only frame that I ever really liked skating flat in was the mega. Mm -hmm. So the GC mega was great for flat for me, um, growing up skating, skating anti-rocker, um, literally the first pair of skates I ever got, I was anti-rocker. So I've never skated anything different. Like I've tried other setups, but it's just, that's always been what I've done, what I've used. Mm -hmm. Um, so going to a flat frame for me, I need the nubs. So skating anti-rocker for so long without those nubs, mm -hmm. you know, like a Celtic or a GC yeah. mega, like I just stick just the way my foot moves, like you know, 15, 20 years of skating in a rocker that way. Like you can't teach an old dog new tricks kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, my, my body is a certain way. It's hard for me to, to retrain it. So I need that. But aside from that, really the only thing I, I always do is I always make sure I have a heel pad. Oh, I always make sure I have my specific insoles. And then if the shell allows for it, I'll put another insole underneath the liner just for extra shock absorption. Yeah. Um, and I've, you know, skating Colts and, and M12s both with the raised heel. I have a lot of people that'll say like, I don't know how you do gaps in the skate. It, it always hurts me when I do gaps. And I'll say, I was like, do you have something underneath the liner? Do you have an extra insole? Like I, I understand with a raised heel boot, you don't want to put a, a, a heel pad in there and raise it even more. For me, that's great. That's what I like. I like being forward, but I understand that's not for everybody. So I'll tell people, I'm like, do you have anything shock absorption in? It's like, no, I just have the stock liner. I'm like, well, if you put even just an extra insole under the liner, like you would be surprised that with those raised heel boots, you might not, you know, feel something uh, as, as intensely, or even just changing out the stock insole in the liner to having something with a little more give and a little more cushion, even that can just be helpful. You know, you don't need to be crazy like me and have, you know, eight heel pads and, and everything yeah, underneath yeah. <laughs> it. you know, um, I've taken setup photos and people are like, why are your liners so high? And yeah. it's like, well, and I never think about it. And it's like, well, it's because there's so much underneath them and it, and it presses up. And like that even then plays into skate sizing. There's, there's skates that I've had that, you know, where I'm a generally an eight or a nine. So there's skates that I've had that are an eight, nine shell. And sometimes they're too big. If I had an extra insole underneath that liner, it pushes me up to the top of that shell and I'm, and I'm cushy in there. Like there's no, there's no wiggle room. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that I don't think people realize too, is you can really change the, the fit of a skate by yeah. like doing different things like that it, do you think or yeah is would you agree if um, boot companies would put more effort in that like in cushioning or just uh, yeah the supporting of the food and stuff would you yeah i i also understand that it's it's kind of a hard thing to you know this skate is already costing us so much to make adding an extra insole under the liner you know it's going to cost us you know however much more Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very understanding that skate companies need to be able to try and make every single dollar they can. Like it's, mm -hmm. we don't have a great industry. It's not huge. You know, skate companies are, you know, barely break even half the time. Mm -hmm. So adding something to the extra to the skate that, you know, from their understanding is like, well, if you want an extra insole under the skate, you just go get an extra insole yeah. and put it in for yourself. Yeah. Um, but I do like, I think this is something that REMS did. And I think a couple USD skates did in the liner underneath the heel, there's like a little elastic band and it gives you the option of having the, uh, having a heel pad in or taking it out. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I've seen Lawrence do uh, a lot of this on the back to blading stuff. Lawrence doesn't like to lean forward. I think he, he likes to be flat footed. Yeah. So I've seen him do like reviews where he's like, you know, under this liner, there's a heel pad and I took it out. Okay. I think that's an option that skate companies should focus on. Um, something that I just noticed, I can't remember what liner it was. I think it was the liner that was in the solo maybe, um, or another rollerblade liner on the bottom of the liner itself. They added a little bit of foam for the heel pad. It was very obvious. It was like, here was the constructed liner. And then we added something. So that's another option too, that, you know, if you're making a liner and it's your skate's not getting a lot of shock absorption, you can just add something underneath. 
I think that's something that skate companies could do, especially if there's a raised heel boot, because a raised heel boot is going to give you more impact regardless of, of what you have, just the way it's made. Um, just kind of giving people a little more option going forward. Like we were saying, like, I think with 3D printing and, and all these things happening, I think skates are going to go back to where they were in the beginning where people are much more DIY about mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. It's like, people are going to learn of like, like me personally, like I need all of that under my skate for me. I'm understanding that a skate's not going to come like that. I've made that setup every single one of my setups that way for 10 years. So I have all the things available to do that. Or like somebody like Justin, who, you know, he loves a carbon boot and he wants to make a specific sole plate for it. So he goes and gets a 3d printer and prints it. Mm. I think, especially with Corona and there being a lack of skates, um, I think people are going to be doing a lot more DIY. I've already started to see it, you know, people cutting off the, the, um, frames on their Aeons and, you know, putting a stock frame on there because they love the boot, but they don't want to have that one piece frame and, and yes. sole, you know, and I, I'm all for that. I love seeing people do it. You know, me having my exploration with Salmons this past year, like it's a lot of work. Like I, I get it. It's, it's tough to be like, well, I'm going to go skate these. And then you skate them and you're like, well, I realize this is messed up. So I got to go home and fix it. And then you got to go back out again and skate it and see if it works. No, it doesn't work. Got to go back home and fix it. Yeah. I'm very, I want to skate out of the box. I want to put it on. I want to go skate. Like, I just want to skate. I don't want to mess with stuff. <laughs> but me getting in that mindset of like having to make things like perfect and modify and, and Dremel and do all these little things. I think if you can get into that mindset and kind of realize what you like to skate and, and do the DIY process, I think going forward with all the options we have, I think that's going to be more of a thing than it has in the past couple of years mm -hmm. where people just get a skate stock and it's kind of, it, it is what it is. I'll deal with it. I think people now are going to kind of, especially with the options available, it feels like there's only been like two or three skates available this year. Yeah. You know, like it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to find things. It's hard to have things available. So I think people are going to start, you know, if this continues getting skates and, and modifying them more. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's a great way to push companies to do things different ways and to make new companies start from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. That's obviously going to boost the industry no matter how, like, yeah, it's going to boost it. Um, Interesting, interesting. Um, one last topic I want to just address was like, um, you talked a little bit about injuries. Um, I like also the process of people like that are injured. Like, how do you get above it apart from the physical aspect, like slowly getting better because yeah. it takes time, but like the mental part is so important too. So especially uh, if you have an injury that hinders your skating. Yeah. You know, if you have, you know, wrist injuries or a shoulder injury, like you can kind of still skate, you know what I mean? Like you can still do something or you can still big wheel skate, mm -hmm. you know, the, the couple injuries that I've had the past few years, they've been ankle related and they've been on my main foot that I do all my grinds with. Mm -hmm. I don't grind enough for me to really learn or care about switch tricks. Mm -hmm. So all of my grinds and tricks are based off of one main sole foot. So if I injure anything on that foot, I'm kind of shit out of luck. Yeah. So, and that's something that was mentally hard for me. Um, when I, I fractured my one ankle um, three years ago, I was able to keep skating. Um, so probably obviously shouldn't have, but I kept skating. Toe rolls were fine. Gaps were fine. Certain grinds were fine, but it just, that, that ankle wouldn't move. It didn't hurt, but it wouldn't move. So it took me a lot of time, um, doing a lot of like exercises and, you know, breaking that, that ankle back in and making it move mobilizing. Yeah. Yeah. This last ankle injury, I tore the ligaments mm -hmm. in my ankle. So that was extremely painful to do anything. And that's what I was kind of telling David, it felt like I was starting from scratch because mm -hmm. when I was able to put skates on and start skating again, most things hurt or my ankle wouldn't move to be able to do more like different things. So that was very, very tough. And like I was telling him, um, a lot of what I did after that injury and the things I was filming and the tricks I was doing was almost redemption for being injured and not being able to skate how I wanted. So going to spots and it, having that mentality of, you know, it was fine at the time, but going to a spot and being, what can I physically do at this spot instead of what is the best trick that I can do? Yeah. That was a very, very hard thing for me to get over. Um, so when I was healed, it was kind of like, 
full steam ahead. I'm doing every single thing I can to, mm-hmm. to like the full extent. Cause I want to make up for that time. And that's just like a me personal thing of how I act in skating and work with, with filming and all that. Um, but I will say that the ligament injury, if I hadn't been still going to the gym and working out how I did, I think I would have been out for way longer. Mm. Um, I know Sean Keen just had a very similar injury and he was out for a very long time. Um, I can't speak to, you know, if he did anything or if it was just, you know, Mm. how, if his injury was different, but I know for me personally, with me still going to the gym and doing certain things, I would take at least 10, 15 minutes of my, you know, 45, half an hour, hour long gym session out of that to specifically work on my ankle. So even if I was doing arms that day, at the end of the day or beginning, I would take 10, 15 minutes, do a couple stretches, do a couple exercises, try to put some weight on it and working through that and knowing my body and listening to my body when, Oh, this is painful. There's that, that level of this is painful. I need to work through it or this is painful, I should stop. Yeah. And kind of realizing that and like pushing it and like pushing my ankle back. I think it, it took a, a couple months off of, you know, my injury time and recovery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. once again, eating healthy plays into it too. If you're eating like shit while you're injured, it's going to take a way longer time to get back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Especially that also, but you, you get a, a few uh, interesting points. Like, yeah, the, Taking the time for your body and knowing your body is so important in, in all sports or just in general, but like in skating to know how your body functions, know how it reacts on, on drops or on, on rails, all that stuff. Just knowing your body, even, even holding your uh, balance on a rail is, is so important. Like the knowing where your body is, is so important for that balance or how to, how to balance things out. So. That's a very important part of it. Um, are, are there things you do before or after skating? Like, uh, are- I should stretch more, honestly, um, mm-hmm. especially now as I'm getting older and having you know skated for as long as I have and like my body deteriorating, I should stretch more, but I feel like I have always done good enough with keeping up with the gym and eating healthy that it hasn't been as much of an issue. Um, it's something that I... <laughs> this is a weird thing for me, especially when I go out filming, I don't like warming up. <laughs> so I don't like going to a warm up spot. I don't like going to like oh, a skate park to warm up. If I'm going to go do a trick, I like to warm up to doing the trick. Um, that's like a weird me thing. Um, so that way, instead of me going to the skate park for an hour, two hours to warm up and wasting my energy, I'm warming up doing the trick I want to do. And then I have more time to continue to do more tricks throughout the day or go to more yeah. spots and do more things like that. And that's kind of just been like a, a time-saving thing too yeah. for me. It's like, if I have five tricks I want to do in a day, I'm not going to go waste an hour at the skate park to warm up. You know, it's a, that's just a waste of time. I'm going to get three tricks instead of five that day. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I definitely, and I think moving forward, it's something that I need to do, but like taking care of, you know, stretching either before or after, you know, heavy long sessions. Um, that's something that I've never done. Um, I don't feel like I've ever needed to, but it's something that I would like to start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. Stretching after. I'm not a big fan of stretching after things. Like, a, like I don't know why. Or there's a theory like that it would help afterwards to get less sore, but I'm not really convinced on that. I'm more of warming up before stuff just to prepare your body to go skating but afterwards like just take your rest your well-deserved rest and let the body deal with the damage it had but it's yeah i think another thing that i need to start doing as well is almost eating a meal after skating how i would eat a meal after the gym because you're putting your body through just as much you know stress and work even more. Um, <laughs> that's, that's something that I would like to get better at doing too. Cause you know, sometimes you just go home and you know, you're done, you shower, you're done for the day. Yeah. But that's another thing that I would like to start doing to try and, you know, kind of help my body. Yeah. That will help in, in just to recuperation time, just to deal with all the time. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right. Great. I'm, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I thank you a lot for your time. Yeah, of course. I think this is something really cool 
for you to be able to do going forward is, you know, talking to different skaters. And, you know, I, I think it's something that's not discussed is how people's health and wellness and, and how it relates to their skating. And I think it's a topic we need to get into more as the sport gets older. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's just the the education that's important or that's going to be important, I guess, for people to skate longer if they want to skate longer. It's, Absolutely, it's going to take a few of their time to to just look after their body and not just only skate or know how they skate or at least. So yeah, that's that's why I started it. So yeah, I'm excited to see what you do going forward. We'll do our best. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I of course, man. Anytime. I really appreciated this. Uh, it's it's a wonderful thing to to talk with you. First time, I guess we talk. Yeah, it's the first time really that we talk. So, yeah, outside really of cool. Instagram or anything. So yeah, stuff like that. But great, perfect. Thanks, man. I thank cool, man. You. Can can we see what you do going forward? I'm excited. Sorry, I said I can't wait to see what you do going oh, yeah, forward. I'm really yeah. excited for um, it all. I'm just gonna continue this way and we'll see <laughs> perfect awesome we gonna, needed it. i'm just gonna end the session right and i'll send you a, lo- a message on instagram if, if that's okay for you cool sounds good bud okay perfect see you talk to you later oh my god that was such an amazing talk i was a little stressed in the beginning because i didn't really know if i would come through with my english and stuff but brendan is such an amazing guy Thank you so much. I didn't have the time to do it in the video. I don't know how, but I just wanted to congratulate you on the pro wheel and the pro frame. That's an amazing job and I'll be sure to get a pair uh, when when they come here in Europe. Um, So yeah, this is the end of the video, guys. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up, comment or subscribe because that helps the channel to grow and I want to reach a lot of people just to educate them on everything we talk about here or everything I talk about in the videos. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see each other in another video. Thanks.